Welcome to a very special episode of Boulder's Gate Baddies, where we take a look behind the baddies and talk to the real life players who play this game and campaign, and it's all very exciting. Due to some fancy technical issues, Campaign A, which doesn't have a name because all the players are muffable and can't come up with a group name, <laughs> uh, is taking a break, and we figured we would uh, check in with the baddies and see how they have, what they think of the campaign so far. And I will start with a question for all of you, but we're going to start with Miranda. How did you come up with your character, and why did you want to play a char- play that kind of character? So I play a lot of D and D, and I usually play like clerics. <laughs> and I was like, this time I'm not going to be a cleric, and this time I'm going to be up to a bunch of shit. <laughs> so for Jin, I wanted to do someone who was more like reliable and like. F- leadery because normally I play a character who's like super just chill I let everybody else take care of things but I've been having more fun being like okay so let's do this or let's move here um and then honestly I was just looking through the races and I was like oh, Bryce can I be a changeling <laughs> and he agreed so here we are uh how about you Jazz well I have never played a paladin before I don't think so I wanted to you know, stretch myself and see if I could play a new class. Um, and I rarely play like girly characters, I guess. And so I wanted someone who is a little feminine. She's not like super, super girly, but she's definitely got it in her. The tabaxi came about as like a joke. I was like goofing around with my friends and I was like doing a Boston accent because that's where I'm from. And I was like, just imagine a cat like, Oh, hey! Like super annoying, and they're like, "You should make that," and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I—that's her. Uh, how about you, Beckers? So, I'm in the other campaign, and I play a, uh, I play Bear, who initially. Can I do spoilers in here or what? <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> like, I, we're, I guess we're, we're gonna pretend that they're dedicated listeners to the entire ca- like lineage of Dungeons and Gamers uh, campaigns. Okay, sick. Bear, who starts as a literal actual bear and then becomes not a bear anymore, but still is like a very uh, kind of stoic person, you know, not really a very simple character, super simple. So I found when I was playing that character that there were so many wisecracks I wanted to make that really just were not really in character (laughs) for that person. So I wanted to make a character that would say a lot of shit sometimes. So <laughs> that's that was the basis for my thing. And I also wanted to play something different from the only thing I've ever played, which is a barbarian. So I was like, let's go as different as possible. I'm going to go bard. And I was like, let's do like a really classic. I'm still new to D&D, so I want to do something that's not out there or crazy, just like a simple bard type character. And they're always satyrs. So that's where I landed on Seder Bard, and then I made her a sheep. Interesting, because like Seder is, I mean, very new to fifth edition. It was added in like one of the books like a year or two ago. So like it, it playing a Seder is actually like outside normal wheelhouse for D anD D. But I suppose well, like see, when you think that of that is how of little bards, I know about D anD D. Like yeah. <laughs> I, I'm thinking like. What I picture is of a bard is like a satyr with a lute. So <laughs> that's, yeah. I thought it was normal. Uh, we'll start with uh, Jazz uh, this time. Um, and this is going to be for everyone as well. Uh, none of you knew each other before this podcast. Uh, what was it like playing with people you don't know? I was definitely shy at first, but it's fun to be in a campaign that's not all like dudes. Uh, <laughs> or the, like pretty much the opposite <laughs> yeah yeah like nothing against dudes I guess but uh, yeah like I guess. we suck I, I, mean, <laughs> I, I guess um, but this is fun in a totally different way and it has a totally different energy than any other like group I've been in or game I've played um, and I think we all like it all clicked together pretty quickly at least in my opinion so it's been really fun 
How about you, Miranda? Uh, yeah, I mean, I also mostly play with dudes. <laughs> so it, Jazz is right, is it does have a totally different energy to the whole affair. And I also am like sup- a super awkward person in general. So like I was worried at first when we first started that I was going to be like uncomfy playing. But I think we all just kind of slid into it really quickly and it was never an issue at all. Um, which cool chicks. So. Uh, how about you, Beckers? I was actually really nervous because it's it's not just that you're playing. It's also that you're you're recording what you're doing at the same time. So I was worried that it would take a little bit for us to get to know each other and be able to, I don't know, work together and go in the same directions and stuff. But it, it just it completely worked from like the first episode. Everything went totally fine. So I didn't need to be nervous at all. <laughs> I'd like to think that a level of that was due to the way I set up the campaign that I was literally like, hey, you guys all belong to the same organization. You are like a, a group together. You you like so it wasn't a deal of like, you know, the other campaign, which was weirdly the opposite of like we all knew each other in some capacity because we had like been on. You guys have seen each other on podcasts uh, that I host and stuff. But then when we did the campaign, our characters didn't know each other. So it was, it was the weird deal. That almost felt harder to form a cohesive thing. Whereas in character, you guys have worked together for however long you've been in the claws. So, But uh, a little bit related to uh, Becker's point, Jazz and Miranda, to my knowledge... Uh, before this, neither of you had done a D&D podcast. Uh, what was, what's that been like? Uh, we'll go with Miranda. Um, I think I tried to a really long time ago and never got off the ground. So like, this has been nice and it has worked better than I would have expected, I think is the best way to say it. Like, <laughs> I am still a little nervous because like, once I say it, it's like permanent. You know, unlike like regular D&D where you could just like walk things back super easily. I'm like, no, like it's out there. It's recorded. I can't just be like, ah, fuck that thing I said. So I'm like a little more careful about what I'm saying and what I'm doing. But like I'm like trying to stay in character and stuff. But yeah, I think I was so worried about all technical issues and how it was all going to come together and everything. But like you're really good at putting stuff together and Aaron's like the most badass editor alive. So it's been good. Uh, how about you, Jess? This is going to make me sound like an ancient old lady, but I've never used like D&D online, D&D Beyond and like doing the like one of my other groups just got into doing the digital map thing, but I don't touch it. So I was worried that I was just never going to learn how to like move my own character or like use the dice roller correctly. And I still have trouble with it, but we're getting better. Other than that, it's just, it's very different than playing at a table. Um, I think it reminds me a little bit of being on stage where like you have to be a little bigger in your reactions so the people you play with can feed off your energy. Because if we were at a table, it would be a lot easier to feed off each other and we're not. I think a one thing uh, for me that is definitely different from playing in person versus a podcast is how not only am I work worried about like making sure you guys have a good time um that that you are like invested in the story and and having your own phone moments i also want to make sure the audience the people who listen are also going to like listen to this and think hey this is a good story that i am invested in and and stuff and it's definitely easier if you have a character in there but making sure podcast listeners care about your characters care about the you know world and stuff um, is is a unique challenge to podcast D and D. I teased uh, Miranda. I was going to ask this, so uh, we're going to go ahead and ask uh, everybody: What's your character's favorite food? Uh, we'll start with Beckers. Um, Marina has a soft spot for dandelions because she's part sheep. So I picture that like she sees dandelions and she gets those like vertical goat eyes. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> nice. It, it goes after it like that. Uh Jess? Um Spark likes 
uh, shaved ice with strawberries because she's a prissy little thing. Uh, Miranda. I think we hinted at this a little bit, but uh, Jen is a big fan of breakfast pastries. <laughs> Uh, what has been your favorite moment so far? Oh, boy. I've been having fun the whole time, which is, like, cheesy but true, whatever. Um, (laughs) One of my favorite moments was honestly, like, the very first episode when we all kind of got introduced to each other, and there was just that, like, moment of chaos where we all entered the kitchen separately, and there was an owl bear, And it's like, it wasn't even an encounter. It was just, like, how do you react to this? And like, how do you react to being part of a team and like meeting these people in real life? And now they're like, and this guy's holding an owl bear and stirring a pot of stew. And like, that's a very fond memory for me. Uh, Miranda? Three kids in a trench coat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Very good moment. Very, very good moment. A uh, body like a lasagna, you know? Um, also a big fan of the moment in the first episode where we left the pub and like the orc was crying off to the side (laughs) and I like rolled so bad on all my perception rolls so I couldn't hear anything that everybody else was hearing so I was super focused on the orc crying in the background just being like guys do you see this (laughs) uh Beckers uh I really liked the big fight in the the place um, the orphan hangout thing. Basically, there was just like a lot of options and a lot of different ways it could go. I haven't done a lot of D and D, so that was like, I don't know. There, there was a real moment of fear when somebody got charmed, and that there was like eight zombies coming down the hallway or something. And I was just like, we could really die here. Bryce hasn't DM'd before. This could be it. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> TPK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- this could be a hit. I don't know. So it was like a that was like the most like into the game uh, any game of D&D I've ever been where I was just like, man, what's the best thing to do here? Like what do we do? So that that was that was pretty cool. I was into it. It was nice. We were all trying to think so fast and it just like <laughs> wasn't connecting half the time. <laughs> and you can tell Bryce is over here like there are so many options and they haven't seen half of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean uh, I, I had given, like, I had given you, uh, before you had even gotten there, like, l- before you had started the adventure, I kind of gave you a, like, oh shit button, uh, which was the, the phone call to base to be, like, call for backup. Well, we're still saving it. We're still. <laughs> well, to be fair, like, they didn't take away your cell phone. You still, like, have that. <laughs> um, but, uh, because I, like that is a something I have learned from watching Dimension Twenty, which is another uh like very popular D and D podcast. Is that I feel like if you're gonna do combat, it needs to be substantial. It needs to be a thing where the like characters are in danger. Because if you're just fighting like goons that you can take down, like why even bother? Like if like have a fight like two goons, just say like. Hey, they fucked up these goons. Not a big deal. But if you're in a serious combat deal, it needs to be serious. Players can die or characters can die. I also wanted you to be able to have the options of like, let's not sit here and just I attack. Then, oh, I hit, I missed, da, 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 back and forth, back and forth. So I also wanted to give you like strategy of like, do do we want to use the oh shit button? Do we want to bar the door? Do we want to use this secret door? Do, like I wanted to give you lots of options and it was interesting seeing how you guys like tackled that all the information that you were presented with i think you did a really good job because like i was actually starting to feel panicked while we were playing <laughs> which is not like something i normally feel during D, but i was like it's getting worse and worse and worse <laughs> all the time <laughs> oh my god there's more <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I yeah. I I did enjoy like we were kind of time crunched because you had to go somewhere, Miranda, as you guys yeah. were exploring the uh, orphan base for the first time. Uh, but I did enjoy like I you know after you got like halfway through, I was like that room's full of bodies, that room's full of bodies, that room's full of bodies. And then once the battle starts and those bodies started becoming zombies, I was just like, I told them how many rooms are full of bodies. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
the thing about that too is like we're all very smart people in real life <laughs> and i i don't know if any of us take notes it just becomes chaotic when there's too much information to think about and it was it's like the last one we recorded where in real life we were confused about we we're like did we take out the did we kill the ball boys did we take their hideout <laughs> is this in game does anyone know what's going on? And for like a full minute, we're like, no idea. Not a clue. Yeah. I just Head like empty, all static. <laughs> I remember three kids in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the we we're we just discussed what, what the answer is gonna be, but I figure I'll ask in case anybody has a different answer. Uh what is a moment that had you on edge? Oh. <laughs> I'm guessing it's all gonna be that fight. Yeah, that fight was really stressful. <laughs> I think I went into, de- into detail about how it was that fight. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I also think the moment where like those people busted into the room in the last episode and we were like, literally, what the fuck are we supposed to be doing right now? And they were like, oh, we'll kill you later. <laughs> I think it was pretty tense. Uh, so I, everyone here has been in at least one other campaign. Uh, Becker's is time in uh, another campaign has been fully recorded but the rest of you have other times so uh how how does uh this campaign uh compare to others you've been in uh let's go with jazz um i've i mean i've been in a lot so at some point they're all different um i think like i said before this being uh no boys allowed squad uh (laughs) makes it (laughs) Very different, the Claws Angels. Um, (laughs) That makes it super different, and it is just a different energy to almost all of our interactions of, like, even one of those first episodes where it was like, oh, you have to go and collect everybody's dues, and we were just like, hello, money, please, and I feel like if I'd been playing with dudes, they would have been like, like, he's just way more aggressive. (laughs) To be fair, I think Miranda tried that tactic. No, that was Becker. Okay. (laughs) That was was, was was me. (laughs) Someone was was very threatening about it. Because I had been like, "Uh, Beckers, you go now. You get the money on this (laughs) one. And she's like, all right. (laughs) (laughs) And we did get into a fight there, so that worked out, I mentioned I played a barbarian. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, I'm a small, small little satyr. Oh, okay. (laughs) I was like, you know, I guess I, I guess that was a threat, wasn't it? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) But that makes it really different. Um, (laughs) Obviously. Um, And the fact that we're like kind of the baddies, like obviously Baldur's Gate baddies, we're like, we're the bad guys. We're in a gang. Like, I don't know that any of us are like full scale evil, but definitely it's the first time I've played a campaign where we're calling ourselves the bad guys and we're not just like a gang of murder hobos who are pretending to be the good guys, you know? Yeah, I mean, that that was also something that I, I wanted to... I mean, I love the alliteration of, of Baldur's Gate Baddies. It just sounds it's cool. It's very good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, the, the uh, kind of uh, anti-hero deal of like... Canonically, Baldur's Gate is like... L- like a level of lawless there is a like the lower city being filled with these gangs that it is like you know old school new york of like you need to be in a gang because the city is so rough but like if cops find you they like you are criminals you know um so it's a level of like and to be fair, the the cops are also like old school New York where they're kind of shitty too. But so it's almost the level of like people form gangs because the cops suck and the, the only people they can trust are the people of their neighborhood. I thought that was like a cool deal and, 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 and a way to kind of connect things. But Miranda. So normally in my past experiences, I've largely DM'd. Like we were talking about earlier, I've largely played with dudes. And I think like... Our attitudes are just so much more casual than I'm used to, like, in in a really good way, where we're like, let's just, like, what is the most low-key way we can approach all of these situations? (laughs) And that it either works out that we did it that way, or it really doesn't. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What's the worst that can happen? We die, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And, like, our handling of James Earl James was just, like, really, really amazing. 
<laughs> especially that's like very much a thing of it being an all woman group, but like none of us are especially good at being like comforting people. <laughs> So we're just like, it's uh, gonna be all right, buddy. <laughs> and I feel your, like in like your different groups, dead. <laughs> it would have been like, there would have been a harder line to things that we've just kind of been super chill about so far. Beckers, I guess you just have the one to compare it with, but uh, how does this... Uh... Right. Out of all of the campaigns yeah. that I have participated the in. Hundreds is... across the years, you know. <laughs> this is just by far just the best <laughs> so, uh, i'm gonna pretend that's genuine <laughs> well see i have it has to be a joke because um the people most likely to listen to this probably are in the other campaign <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah so that that you know i've been in two campaigns it's it's great the other campaign is also i think like there's one more female than male. It's a bigger campaign. It's me, Aaron, and Katie, and Darian, and then three dudes. So yes, it's another female heavy campaign. We just we're out here. <laughs> yeah. It's largely because I don't get along with dudes well. So I just <laughs> he gets bullied. <laughs> <laughs> he gets bullied here too. I mean, it's it's uh, <laughs> might have to do with the fact that you bully me. <laughs> we had an entire <laughs> we, had an, we had an entire podcast that was ninety percent you bullying me and ten percent coming up with video or video game ideas. <laughs> I don't make friends well. <laughs> <laughs> is is that is that why? Like, I was the the way that we became friends was just like, hey. Like the one interaction I had with you, you seemed funny. Do you want to do a podcast? And <laughs> now we're for, like good friends. Mm -hmm. That is He's coming to my house. Yeah, I'm staying at your house in a, in two weeks. Mm -hmm. That's funny because I think Bryce and I met by like uh, he tweeted at me once. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> I mean, I had not spoken with Jazz before the like setting up stuff for this podcast. Oh, I, I love that. I was trying to find enough players to run this campaign because, like, I had this idea for, like, a year or two of, like, it would be really cool to run. I think, I think it was early on when we had come up, when I had come up with the idea to get rid of the baker in the other campaign and send him to Boulder's Gate uh, with the, like, guys of, you got invited to the Boulder's Gate Bake Off. And I was just like looking up stuff about Boulder's Gate. And I was like, oh, it'd be really cool to run a campaign that's like crime centered in, in Boulder's Gate. And I could not fi find people to play D&D &D for the podcast. Beckers was the only one who wanted to come over from the other one. And then eventually I found Miranda. And then I was just like, well, two people isn't gonna gonna be enough. I, we need at least one more. And I was just like, hey, anybody... And Jazz <laughs> liked the tweet. Yeah, I, I did not respond to the tweet. I it was about D and D, so I was like, like, and I yeah, Bryce and I had never interacted. I think we follow each other because of Alex and Neil. Yeah, yeah. That and, entire like internet group is just one little yeah. scraggly ball. <laughs> little did you know that liking yes. that tweet was signing a contract. <laughs> I, yeah, there go went my soul. I was just like, Jazz. I noticed you liked the tweet. Would you like to like? <laughs> and she's like, oh, uh, I guess. <laughs> it worked out. Yeah, and that's that's how we got here. I'm glad, Jazz, that uh that we were just brand new people to this. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your favorite NPC? And additionally, what NPC would you like to know more about? My answer to both. <laughs> I think it's three kids in a trench coat. <laughs> 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 I want to know about under the trench coat. That That is like so funny <laughs> that you guys like love that so much because I literally like <laughs> when I was like setting up the map and stuff because I had created like this cool multi-level map for that, that uh, area because I wanted to test multi-level maps. And I I let you guys pick like okay 
who's watching the ring, who's like checking out the the audience and and like watching over and who's taking tickets and you guys pick literally right before the session um and i knew like linda uh was gonna come up and kind of like do a little lower drop on them um and then and then uh the person in the ring would just be overseeing uh, like the fights and 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 doing that but i was like Okay, there should be some sort of substantial encounter for Ticket Taker. And I was just like, what if someone super weird comes in and that's super and I was just like, Hey, here's here's someone weird and yep, Becker's Becker's uh, handled that. I feel like one <laughs> funny thing that I've noticed is that Becker's whenever told like, Okay, how much money do I owe you? Becker's just like the normal amount? <laughs> <laughs> the correct amount of money, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I don't make change, so. <laughs> I don't know what things cost. <laughs> um, Jazz. Um, my favorite NPC is the Leonin. I don't remember her name. Because head she's empty, a all static. She's a baddie. I want her to be my friend so bad, and I realized that she just wants to fight me, and she thinks we're like rivals. And Sparks gonna be real upset about that later when she just wants to be her friend. Um, <laughs> she, but she's my favorite. I want to know more about Ben because he's like real quiet and he takes in strays, but like animal strays. Crimson Claws kind of takes in strays a little bit, but he's just like he's just wilding out with like dangerous animals, and he's like whatever. Why? What made you like this? You know. Yeah. Um, Miranda. Um, I like. Uh, I, I like our crying orc friend. <laughs> 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 Just like every time he shows up, he cracks me up. Like I'd also like to know more about that little group, him and his little friend, who smelt really bad the first time <laughs> I met him. Uh, well, you guys I have like it was the a- choir that smelled bad. A, a tenuous ally with them, so uh, yeah, we we did really bad at <laughs> recruiting. Them. Uh, well, you yeah, we you did. guys will, you guys will see how well your roles uh, play out at the the start of next session, because I, I had you guys do a uh, downtime roles to kind of determine how well your recruiting went, and like I did give you the chance to talk to specific characters, but we'll I'll let you uh, hear how Becker's is. Uh, performances went and and uh, the recruiting effort and all that before i ask the final question uh do you guys have any questions for me or questions you want to know from each other how much do you have planned uh i have let's see i already teased the next adventure mm-hmm. i know let's see I think I have at least seven potential adventures of like, here is things that they can do. And I, you know, in the other campaign, um, Katie is very much like, let's the players push the the story first. And uh, that was one thing that like, I'm like, okay, you guys are part of a gang, so you're kind of taking cues from Linda, from Claw, of like, hey, go go get, you know, this money that is owed to us. Go do this thing. And then from there, you guys are very much, hey, are you going to, like, kill these orphans? Are you going to, you know, like, blow up this building? You know, what happens from that? So I do have the luxury of going... The next adventure is you're you're gonna get sent to a cheese factory or whatever. <laughs> like what happens next is entirely up to you. But I do know seven possible adventures. It's gonna be a matter of like what feels right at this time. Does this feel like a good time to throw in a pirate adventure? Maybe maybe the way that things are going, like uh this would be a time that I have an idea for like a betrayal thing or or different things, and it's it's what what you guys are gonna get is kind of gonna be determined where the story is overall. But I have like seven ideas for adventures, and 
I also know what every campaign's got to have some sort of BBG. Yeah. And uh, I, I do know the, what the BBG's overall mission is. So that that's, uh, you know, what I know. We would be so cute as pirates. Oh, my God. Yeah, for real. The little outfits. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Spark with a little like tricorn hat with her ears. Oh my god. Love it. Uh any other questions for me or each other? I think we know this, but who's your favorite NPC? <sighs> I mean, I like them all for different reasons. Who do you think is my favorite NPC? You were so excited to show us Sparbles. Yeah. You were so excited. I I very much like thought you guys would really like Schmarbles. Like I I had practiced his voice and his whole thing of like him being a wizard but talking and like I'm Schmarbles. Would you like this? <laughs> Was what I thought I thought would be like really funny of him just being like I have this magic stick. Also, I can make sparkles. <laughs> would be <laughs> would be would be really good. But like him I like him for his like he is straight up like, you know, this comedic uh diversion of expectations of like what you would expect a magical shopkeeper to be. And then, you know, you've got people like like claw like i like what i know of his backstory and what what his like who who he is big picture you know like like the main claws like i know um how they joined like what what brought ben to the group what brought linda to the group uh how how claw became you know the the leader of the deal and Someone like James Earl James, I, I'm still figuring out because I literally, like, I kind of wavered of, like, how old is this kid? Because I want the, him him to be this, like, you know, small, like, orphan character who is, who is put in this bad position. But I don't want to take away your ability to kill this kid if that is what, where the, the things, like, if he was, he is in a situation where he's kind of threatening you guys. If you guys kill him, he is old enough to get murdered. Did you think that we were going to adopt him? I, it was a 50-50 of like, it, it could go either way. I I purposely did not have him like attack you so that it wasn't like, a, well, he's attacking you. You guys are going to fight back. So I thought it was probably a 50-50 of like, you guys might kill him. You might adopt him. We'll see. <laughs> um. But yeah, uh, I I like basically every character is either I really like the deep story that that I envision for them, or I like the the weirdness that I have brought. Like you know, and and I hope I I try and have some level of that with every character I introduce. If it's the the guy in the fighting ring whose junk doesn't work or <laughs> or or something and and i think there's even just the level of like some even if it's just like the orphan who is just like this orphan who's all his friends has been murdered he's got a funny name <laughs> <laughs> uh have we done anything that surprised you or was there a moment of ours that was your favorite I think <laughs> I think an interesting thing that I didn't expect when I was setting up that fight was that you guys would just stand in the doorway <laughs> and not <laughs> not close the door or anything <laughs> because I I had set up all of these objects and eventually you guys realize that like oh you can select these because i had set up l small boxes medium boxes large boxes so that you could bar the door and i would have the zombies like attack the id and and like they would have to diminish the boxes hp to to be able to get through 
None of that came up because you guys were just like, we're just going to block the door with our bodies. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay. Um, we were panicked. <laughs> <laughs> I like to envision that in real life. Just three women standing in a doorway screaming. <laughs> just like zombies. And we're just like. I think I, I do just try and picture like. If you're in this situation, what are any possible ways that you could possibly do this? And what can I facilitate to allow that as an option? Like, like with that situation, I gave you a barrel of TNT of like, if you guys want to like throw that at the zombies and deal with it that way, like, you know, that's a deal. If uh, there was uh, so. A little bit uh, behind the curtain. The different ways that I envisioned you could handle that. You could have clawed, called Claw and and uh, and got some backup uh, from him. Which I definitely wouldn't have mind. Uh, like, I definitely had in my head uh, the way I would describe Claw dealing with the zombies. You could have just straight up killed the succubus. Uh, that uh, would have had different results of, like, different thing. How you handle different situations will have long-standing uh you know results um you could just don't kill the succubus straight up uh blocking the door so you just can all the like focus on the uh succubus there was the side door uh that like obviously the succubus ended up going through i'm i wasn't like a thousand percent like how you would use that strategically i was just like a it's gonna be a hidden door, and you guys like maybe you guys come from the side, or you you guys could have flanked them or or something. And then there was the uh, the one that you guys eventually uh, managed to get to, which like I I did know what the contract said, um, because you could read it. Uh, but I, I did I did give you a little bit because you like literally your characters were panicking, so trying to like read out a contract as you're panicking, <laughs> uh, I had you roll for it and. Were, you were rolling bad, but eventually, <laughs> eventually, you you uh, found out enough about the contract. I do like the way it. that played out with this middle manager succubus, and then the lady justice, and us being like, "This contract was bad." <laughs> like, <laughs> bad of all the ways we could have resolved it, that's what we went with. So yeah, I I can't think of anything. Oh. This is actually something I did not at any point expect you like was completely out of left field. You guys trying to turn the fight around in the the blood pit uh, by cheering for him. I did <laughs> not expect of like, oh, we want him like I very much thought that was going to be like the first fight. I was just like, this chick gets three attacks per turn and these guys kind of suck. <laughs> that I don't think this is going to last more than two rounds. The second fight, I was just like, I'm going to do like one or two rounds. And then after that, I'll just be like, and then the fight fades to black or whatever. But you guys, because he was losing, you guys were like, I'm going to cheer for him. I want him to win. And I was just like, <laughs> guess we're playing this out. And and, <laughs> and I gave him, gave him advantage because you guys were cheering. <laughs> Although uh, Marina was talking a little shit, but I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll go with the advantage. That's why I made the character. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, you did talk shit about uh, Dickless. You, <laughs> he, I mean, what is it worth it to talk shit about Dickless? He <laughs> he accepts what he who he is. He knows he knows he knows himself, and he's uh, he's, he's having a hard enough time. Yeah, <laughs> is he? Damn. I'm going to ask one more question and we'll wrap this up. Did you guys find this secret hidden in the release version of one of the episodes? No, absolutely not. Okay. Just uh just figured I'd see. He's trying to he's oh, trying no. to boost his listener counts right now. <laughs> <laughs> there uh as as I've indicated, not only as this podcast for you guys, the players, I'm making sure the audience is having a good time and maybe they have knowledge that uh, you guys oh. don't. Uh, Interesting. But, uh, thank you uh, for uh, talking. Thank you to the listeners for uh, listening. And uh, we'll catch up uh, 
with the the baddies uh eventually whenever whenever the oh uh, actually we hopefully due to some planning we'll see not from the baddies but from the players uh soonish um so get excited for that we'll have more details once we have them <laughs> That was so vague. Yeah, that's that's about <laughs> all I get. We'll have more details once we have more details. Uh, but the best way to find details is uh, by following the Twitter account, uh, Dungeons Gamers, uh, where we post uh, cool clips uh, from uh, both campaigns. And uh, just to remind people, if you want to see what everyone's up to, uh, everyone tell us your socials so you can follow people when they're not on the podcast. Uh, Miranda. Uh, you can follow me at JaegerX7. That's J-A-E-G-E-R-X7. Right now, all I'm tweeting about is our flag means death. <laughs> Jazz. Uh, you can follow me at Jazz underscore Foster on Twitter, mostly for hot takes and thirst traps. Thirst traps? Ooh. Hell yeah, good thirst trap. I'm yeah, gonna go I'm, follow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little, it's been a while. I'm a little out of my game, but we're getting back into it. Uh, Beckers, are you looking up what your oh, Twitter I'm, name is? I'm right already now? following her. Um, <laughs> I actually was looking up my own Twitter name. Uh, it's at Doctor Dr. Doctor Beckers with a Z. Okay. Do you want me? To, do you want me to spell it all, or is that good enough? No, I, I mean, if you want to give an Instagram or anything else. If, I don't. I, I, I don't. Tell it, us what you tweet about. Yeah. What do you, yeah. What do you tweet about? What do I tweet about? I retweet stuff that makes me giggle. That's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good enough. And my feelings about leggings. My pinned tweet is about how I can't find leggings that aren't a control top because I just want my tummy to be free. <laughs> that that was what you decided to pin. <laughs> Yeah, that's my con. That's I feel strongly about it. <laughs> that's good. Damn, my pinch tweet is about this podcast. <laughs> well, now I'm I not a bad. good person, <laughs> <laughs> and that's why this podcast was perfect for you. <laughs> Mine's about making a dating sim where Waluigi is the bachelor. <laughs> He deserves love too, which I feel strongly about. <laughs> I think we made that for Gay Mate Corp. Didn't we, Beckers? Wait a minute. Hold on. I. It's like we, same wavelength. <laughs> we literally. I think we really did make something about. Oh, I think we. That. I think we made Luigi's Mansion, and it was like like Playboy Mansion meets or Waluigi. <laughs> yes. yes, that was it. It was. <laughs> He's pretty much a Waluigi dating sim. Yeah. He is always giving out roses. Like he only shows up to parties. He just wants to find love. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you on the flippity flop. Bye. Bye bye. bye.